So yeah, I'm Lois, I'm from Todmorden Food Dropping. So we're a food bank, a completely independent food bank in Todmorden. So that means that we're not affiliated to any of the national organisations like Trussell, Trussell Trust, anything like that. Um, and we, we give out emergency food, so we have a three bag rule of where um, we are going to give people a maximum of three bags of food um, and it is to last them between three or four days, so like I say we are emergency uh, food provision. Uh, we were set up, unfortunately, we celebrate our fourth birthday on Saturday, um, and I say unfortunately because we constantly have this big debate between uh, all the volunteers about um, why we exist and how long we should be carrying on. It was originally set up as an emergency kind of provision, and there was no expectation that we would become part of the community, and unfortunately, we've become part of the community. And that's a positive thing, but it's also a negative thing, because it means that the issue of food poverty is just not going away. Um, about five years ago, um, uh, what the local vicar and a couple of other members of the communities got together and started discussing kind of food poverty and what needed to be done, because at that point, food poverty wasn't talked about that much. Um, so they decided to kind of get together and set up the food bank. Um, that opened in June 2013, and I started vol uh, volunteering in July, so I've been there quite a long period of time. And sad to say that we have continually seen our figures grow. We see more and more people coming. We see probably on average three or four new people every week. So we give out food parcels to roughly round about, um, it can fluctuate between 70 to 90 people each Saturday. And, and bear in mind, this is a very, very small town. We are on the border of Lancashire and Yorkshire, uh, and we're a small town, but we're seeing high levels of poverty uh, in the town. So, like I say, we, I think the most we've ever had on a Saturday was about 120, 125. So you can imagine we were absolutely snowed under. So what we do is we operate from a local church who've been kind enough to give us the, um, the space for free. We have a big storage unit there as well. So we open at half past nine and people come in and um, get a pack of food. But we also have a cafe as well. So we run a cafe so that people can sit and have a cup of tea and have something to eat. Um, and also just kind of sit and talk to one another. I think what we're beginning to see as well, which has astounded me, is this isn't just about food. It's about isolation. It's about loneliness. It's about feeling connected to something. It's about people helping one another out. Uh, I'll never forget a gentleman arriving late and uh, another gentleman saying, um, all we could give them, because we give a choice, I will talk about what we give in a minute, but he um, had arrived late, could only have an emergency pack, and uh, so we were kind of quickly getting things together for him, and another gentleman said, well, you can have some of my food, and if you don't want anything, I'll swap with you. So there's a real community spirit that I think uh, people don't realise is there, but we see it on a, a weekly basis. So we have about um, 80 volunteers. It takes a lot of running and a lot of organising. So we have 80 volunteers and they range from people that, there's probably about 30 of us on a Saturday morning that do various different jobs, from greeting people to checking that people are all right, to um, then going and getting the food that they want, to then you know make, uh, running the cafe and things like that. We then have another group of volunteers that go and collect um, food from the supermarket. So we buy a lot of our food, but we also have lots of food that is going to go into landfill so we have local supermarkets that donate some food um, Lidl's have been fantastic Morrison's have got a lot better we have real battles with our local Morrison's and they've got a lot better over the years um, we also have a group of volunteers that come to the markets in Manchester and pick up fruit and vegetables. So we try and offer a range of, of uh, food for the people that come. So I'll show you very quickly because I think people are really surprised. So like I say, the, I think the thing that astounds people is that we ask for no proof. So people come and we tr take them on trust. So unlike the Trussell Trust and other bank, food banks, nobody has to be referred, nobody has to provide evidence that they are in need. We take them on face value. So if you turn up to our food bank on a Saturday morning, we'll take some basic details and we don't even check those. So if you want to give us a false name, that's all right. But we just need some details of kind of your, your name, your age, roughly where you live and if you've got fam uh, you know, who else is living in the house with you. And that is because we ap um, apply for grant and funding applications and we sometimes need that information. And also it's good to see kind of trends so what we see is we've got a large number of single men. Single men are hit by benefit sanctions. Um, people with mental health issues are three times likely to be hit by benefit sanctions. So we sit, and so it's good for us to kind of track trends as well. 
Um, surprisingly, and the Daily Mail would be quite shocked by this, we don't have massive numbers of large families. Um, we have, on, I think we've got three families that have got more than five children. On average, uh, the families that come have one or two children. Uh, but single men are predominantly the, the largest, largest number. So people come, we, don't, we take them on faith, value, um, on trust. They can choose 17 items. So these are kind of the rough items that we give out. So we give out canned goods, pasta sauces, toilet roll. To oh, toilet roll counts for one item. If you've got three teenagers in your house like me, this isn't going to go very far. <laughs> but that's one of your 17 items. Hungry, if you've not got gas and electric, if your cooker's knackered, you can't afford, we need to send people to the credit union, they're waiting for that money, then bread and jam will probably feed you for quite a while. Shampoo. Now, the thing that people forget is that toiletries, personal hygiene is really important. Shampoo, conditioner, it's so expensive. Razors, female and men. Sanitary products, you know, um, women's sanitary products are... are are very, very popular and we're constantly asking for donations. Uh, beans are a real staple as well and uh, things like macaroni cheese and um, pasta. So what we try and do is we try and think about people that maybe are living homeless. Ga like I said, gas and electric are, are a big thing. People getting real debt with gas and electric, having gas and electric cut off, not having enough money to kind of mend their cookers or microwaves when they break. So we need to think about meals that can sustain people when maybe they've only got a kettle or they've got limited gas and electric. Um, sustainability, like I say, what we've seen in thriftiness, I think it really surprises us. So people think there's this misconception that people that come to food banks can't cook. They, that is absolutely not true. Um, you know, the fresh fruit and vegetables, we have such conversations with people about, actually, I can make this and I can make this and I can make this out of this. And we're sharing recipes, sharing ideas, people making things and bringing them back and saying, this is what I've made, do you fancy trying it? Um, you know, we have a lot of people that um, then become volunteers. So we make sure there's, there's, there's not this them and us kind of atmosphere in our food bank. So a lot of our volunteers are also taking food parcels. And that is about, it's about, um, you know, pride. A lot of people are very, have got real pride and are really ashamed that they've got to the point that they're having to come to a food bank. Um, so it's about giving them some sense of pride and some sense of purpose that they, they too can kind of make a difference. And your final question on the list was, what can we do? What are your plans for the future? There's an election today, you know, and I mean, I do not mean this, uh, you know, I'm not here to be really political, but the benefit sanctions, Ken Loach is completely right, this is conscious cruelty, and I would not have believed it if I don't, if I hadn't seen this on a weekly basis with my own eyes. People, you know, we've got a lady that came in two months ago, husband had died, learning difficulties, money had been stopped, she'd been sanctioned, she doesn't understand the process, there's very limited support in our community, social services are stretched to the max, and uh, so we're trying to offer advice and assistance to her. We've now just recently got um, a benefits advice service to come in once a month, uh, volunteers again. Um, so people facing real difficult challenges. So hopefully, you know, by voting and by thinking about kind of the future and austerity, then maybe hopefully there may be some changes. Uh, for the community, um, when we started out, we had quite a rough deal from the community. You know, these are drug users, these are people spending their benefits in the local pubs and things like that. So we've done a lot of work with the community about actually what are the real issues for people. These are families, these are people that have lost their jobs, these are people on zero hour contracts that are actually working but can't afford to buy food. Um, we have some people that come you know, for a week. We have some people that come for six weeks and then we have some people, the small amount of people that maybe it's more long term. But on the whole, people are trying to make ends meet. So we've done a lot of work with our local community and we've found that the support for the local community, from the local, sorry, local community has kind of grown and developed. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs>